just like 2019, the ping pong balls do not fall in the Atlanta Hawks' favor. And I wasn't expecting them to anyways. In fact, going into this NBA draft lottery, I anticipated two things. One, I anticipated the Hawks to fall back to probably five or six, and that's exactly what happened. The Hawks fell from three to six. And the second thing I was anticipating, I was anticipating the Golden State Warriors to get that number one pick. Well, a third thing I was anticipating, I was anticipating the Knicks to get into that top three, maybe even top four. And two of those three things didn't happen. In fact, with the Warriors, I'm really surprised. Considering that there's been controversy in the past about how the NBA draft lottery is rigged, from the Cavaliers winning the lottery two years in a row, I anticipated that the Warriors would be the number one pick. In fact, I'm absolutely shocked that they didn't win this lottery. That went to the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Golden State Warriors are number two. So I do want to talk about the Timberwolves and the Warriors for a second. But the Minnesota Timberwolves, I think they're a team that is on the rise. Carl Anthony Towns, if he can have some talent built around him through the draft and free agency, I think he can be a future NBA MVP. Now, if you're a team like the Timberwolves and you have got this number one pick, I think there's no way you trade it. I think you have to take the number one pick. You've got to take a chance on somebody. Which, there really is no consensus number one prospect this year. Like what we are normally used to. Last year, we were anticipating Zion to be that first overall pick. And there really is no Zion Williams in this season. In fact, I will say this though. It feels like if the draft was tomorrow night... Or next week, I would anticipate the number one overall pick being Anthony Edwards out of Georgia. That's what I would anticipate. Earlier this season, it would have been anticipated that the pick could have been James Wiseman out of Memphis. As far as the Golden State Warriors is concerned, Timberwolves, they shouldn't trade this pick at all. I think you've got to take a chance, probably... If I had to guess, it would be Anthony Edwards out of Georgia. The Golden State Warriors would pick number two. Now, this is very interesting because if the Warriors had gotten that first pick, I would have at least had a thought that maybe they would try trading that to maybe get an extra pick in 2021 or maybe get a veteran player or even two. But now... I would think that the Warriors, they may end up keeping this number two pick. If they would have gotten the number one pick, they'd be on the phone right now with teams looking to trade this pick. And the team that I think would be the first one to take the bait would be the Atlanta Hawks. And as far as this number two pick is concerned, just think about it. You have Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, all three of those are going to be completely healthy by the time this next season begins. Because Steph Curry had a wrist injury early in the season. Clay Thompson is still recovering from that ACL injury in Game 6 of last year's NBA Finals. And Draymond Green was injured all throughout last season. So those two are going to be healthy next season. And I would anticipate the Warriors are going to, at the very least be probably the fourth seed in the Western Conference next year. That's the lowest that I'm predicting. And if you add somebody like James Wiseman out of Memphis, that could make the team even more dominant. It could rebuild that dynasty. Although it's really still a dynasty to me, I think the dynasty just took a year off. Because realistically, we all knew it was going to. With Kevin Durant leaving, with Klay Thompson still recovering the ACL injury, and with Draymond Green being injured early in the season as long along with Steph Curry. We knew it was going to take a year off. But now everybody's going to be healthy. And if they take James Wiseman with that second overall pick, I fully anticipate the Warriors winning another championship within the next three years. So the Warriors now, I don't think they're going to trade the number two pick at all. 
if they were, I would expect the Hawks to take the bait on it. Because the Hawks, they usually don't seem to really pick where they're supposed to. Because remember last year, they went up from 8 to 4. And then they ended up with DeAndre Hunter. The year before that, they had the third pick. They originally take Luka Doncic. But then they make a trade with the Mavericks. And they get Trey Young. And I still think Luka, to this day, would have been the better selection for the Hawks at this point. If it was, if they would have went with Luka, I'm willing to bet that they are in the NBA playoffs right now. They are sitting in that bubble. I'm willing to bet that happens. And the Mavericks, maybe they're not in the bubble right now. Maybe the Phoenix Suns get their chance in the playoffs. We probably see Devin Booker in the playoffs. Excellent performance in the bubble. So my final point of discussion is what will the Atlanta Hawks do with pick number six? Because I don't see the Timberwolves or Warriors trading their picks. Because right now, there's really no reason to. Now, I have seen on the Atlanta Hawks subreddit on Reddit that the popular pick here at number six is probably Isaac Okoro out of Auburn. I've seen that as the most popular pick. And it could make a lot of sense. Although, could the Atlanta Hawks maybe trade the sixth overall pick to try to get a veteran player? And also this could be sacrificing a 2021 first round pick as well if they were to get a veteran player. Just think about a veteran player the Hawks could get. Bradley Beal has come out and said that he would love to play with Trey Young. And I think the Wizards, realistically, they're probably going to be in rebuild mode. In fact, I think they already are. Just think about it. Just a few years ago, we saw John Wall dominate against the Atlanta Hawks in the playoffs. So I fully anticipate maybe the Hawks and Wizards interacting, maybe trying to trade that sixth pick away, maybe get Bradley Beal, and maybe give up a 2021 first-round pick. So I think at this point, the Wizards could really benefit from some draft picks. What about maybe a surprise here, but maybe Donovan Mitchell for the Utah Jazz? There has been rumors about Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, they don't have good chemistry at this point. Donovan Mitchell is, was upset with Rudy Gobert, as, as, as well as most of the Jazz players, about how Rudy Gobert was not taking COVID-19 seriously by touching the microphones a couple of days before his positive test was revealed to the sports world and the world in general. And there was rumors that even weeks after recovering that Donovan Mitchell was still upset with Rudy Gobert. Now, I don't know if they maybe talked it out, maybe in the bubble, or maybe before that. But that could be a possibility. Or, what if they trade for Devin Booker? I'd say the second biggest man, well, the second biggest man in the bubble, behind Damian Lillard at this point. What a performance for the Phoenix Suns, all led by Devin Booker. Devin Booker honestly deserves better. Even Draymond Green said it. And he got fined for it too. For someone like Devin Booker, maybe trade a little bit of assets. The problem is, what kind of assets do the Hawks have that they're willing to give up? Because I can't anticipate them wanting to give up Trey or even John Collins. Or even Reddish or even DeAndre Hunter. Who could they even trade? Could they trade Kevin Herter? Could they trade, I don't know, who would they trade? Do they have, do the Atlanta Hawks even have trade assets if they need to give up some, th give up some players if they want to get a veteran player? Do they have any assets that they are willing to get rid of? Could they be willing to get rid of John, trade away John Collins? Could they trade away Kevin Herter? Leave your comments, well, your thoughts in the comment section down below and like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day, wonderful night whenever you're watching. See you next time.